Hello, it's Reya and welcome to another video. Are you someone who has an obsession with Excel spreadsheets and actually likes pie charts? Do you yearn for some queer romance? Did you think that Traitor Baru Cormorant would have been better if it had less accounting and even more pining? If you answered yes to all of these questions, or even just two of them, I have a book for you. And that is A Taste of Golden Iron by Alexandra Rowland. Now I will present you five reasons why you should definitely read this book. The first reason why you should read this book is because it is a queer fantasy romance with a multi-POV narrative. It features point-of-view chapters from both of the main leads. And I wouldn't necessarily say that a multi-point of view is anything special, but in this case I find it adds to the narrative a lot because it basically has this exploration of different perspectives and different point of views and how your opinions of the how your opinions and viewpoints of the same event can alter the way you communicate with each other. So this deals a lot with um, subverting miscommunication and also like allowing these characters to grow and develop based on how they approach information and how they change their opinions based on new information um, and how their perception can be warped uh, by their biases. This is all fantastically handled in this, uh, in, in this multi-POV narrative. Um, it deals excellently with this idea that two people who have witnessed the same events and have most of the same knowledge of the situation can arrive at completely different uh, like opinions and completely different mindsets about, uh, about any given situation. I think the multi-point of view uh, narration in this has, is done excellently. So that is uh, one reason you should pick this up. The second reason you should pick this up is because of the world building. This is set in a secondary fantasy world um, that has sort of like a low magic. There are people who can essentially taste uh, metal and identify which metals are in, an, in a given alloy and where those metals have come from, uh, depending on how sensitive their taste touch is, essentially. So they can touch, for example, a coin and determine where, where and how that coin has been minted and what materials were used uh, to make it. And there are also um, a type of type of like truth witch um, uh, type of uh, magicians who basically are sort of interrogators and also like uh, human lie detectors essentially. So it so this world has a kind of like um, uh, a low magic which makes it really interesting. But also this world feels very rich and real. You will learn about inheritance laws, you will learn about how gender is viewed in different parts of the world uh, in, this, uh, in this secondary fantasy world, and also um, you will learn about economics and fashion and how, how fashion is viewed uh, in culture and also outside uh, the culture that is being focused on here. So the world building is really intricate and neat, and also, there is no spoon feeding. You are not given um, information outside of like context clues because the characters themselves are in this culture. They have been born in this culture. Therefore, there is no reason for them to explain a lot of these things. So a lot of the information um, is given to the reader from context clues and not spoon fed via exposition, which I found uh, to be really... Um, cool and uh, fantastic. So world building is definitely another reason you should pick up this book. The third reason you should pick up this book is that this has fantastic anxiety rep. Now, I personally do have anxiety and I have social anxiety. Um, that said, I do not speak for every single person who has ever had anxiety or will have anxiety um, because people's experiences with anxiety differ. However, I will say that a lot of the way um, anxiety was portrayed in this book uh, felt really 
close to my own experiences with it and also the sort of shame and frustration uh, that one can associate with uh, having to deal with um, anxiety and especially with having to be vulnerable with other people about it uh, hit very close to home. So if you are on the market for some anxiety uh, representation, uh, this is definitely a book that has that in spades. And also what I really liked about the anxiety representation in this book is that it does not diminish the character and the character uh, who has it um, is allowed to have agency, is allowed to have agency over their own um, self and also is not ridiculed by other characters and is not cuddled or made to feel like there's something that that is inherently wrong about them. Um, and uh, yeah, that is, I, I feel like this has a very empowering way of talking about uh, anxiety and I felt I felt like the author handled it with a lot of care um, and a lot of empathy. So anxiety rep is another reason why you should pick up this book. Reason number four to really pick up this book is the humor. This book has a lot of humor, especially coming from a one specific side character who I hope will get their own story at some point, but uh, there is a lot of very subtle uh, jabs and like sarcastic humor in this, which I really liked. Uh, sometimes uh, humor can go over my head and also can be a little over much, but I felt like in this uh, book it was definitely needed at some point, especially given how um, how some of the content surrounding anxiety can be a re can be really heavy. So I personally felt that the little little nuggets of humor here and there, especially towards the end of the book, were were fantastic. So uh, this definitely had a kind of humor that I personally found really uh, exciting. And my final reason, the fifth reason you should pick up this book, is because of the delicious pining. This has fantastic pining between the two main characters uh, of Cado and uh, Evemer, uh, who are essentially a prince and a bodyguard, and they have this slow burn um, attraction uh, towards each other. They, they kind of start on the wrong foot. They do not necessarily like each other at first, and then they kind of get to know each other, they have this slow build-up, and then there is this delicious pining and some angst thrown in, but not too much. The angst level is not ridiculous. And also, I love that this uh, fantasy romance does not have the miscommunication and uh, third act breakup in it as well. So it's like, um, it's like this slow burn ride towards a happy conclusion, which I really enjoyed. So uh, if you are in the market for a good pine and good pining, pick this up. And there you have it. Those were my five reasons why you should pick up A Taste of Golden Iron by Alexandra Rowland. I really enjoyed reading this book. I had a fantastic time and I essentially could not put this book down once I got let's say, past the, like, 100, 100 first pages. Uh, after that, it was just like a roller coaster ride. I would not have wanted to get off the ride, even if I could have. Um, I, I basically just spent um, my entire weekend glued to my couch reading this book, because it was just that good. So, yeah, tell me in the comments, are you planning on reading this? Have I persuaded you to read this book? And also, if you have read this book, Give me some recommendations on other similar books uh, that have similar tropes to this one, because I would very much want to know and read those, especially if they are fantasy romance. And leave me a gold coin or gold bar emoji down in the comments so that I know that you were here, because it's a taste of gold and iron. So, so yeah, I will see you in another video very soon. Bye-bye!